Hello, welcome to this 11th week of this lecture series. We are almost towards the end of this course, we are having only 2 weeks left. So, we are discussing about the flotation process that is the froth flotation process, we will continue this in this week also. So, we are discussing about the flotation mechanism in much more detail. So, we are continuously saying that the stability of the froth is very important. That is, I have already tried to explain that you need certain stability that is certain retention time of the froth into the froth phase. So, that is why I have written the stability of the froth. Now, it depends on the strength of the attachment of the bubble to the mineral surface. Because if the mineral starts getting dislodged from the bubble surfaces in the froth phase, then uh, the uh, entire effort is meaningless. So, it depends on at what intensity it the bubbles and particles they are getting adhered to. Now, how do we know what is this strength and can we not estimate it or can we not measure it? Of course, we can. So, this strength can be estimated with the help of a equation called young dupre equation, which relates the strength of attachment to the interfacial energies. Now, what is that? Let me explain you. Now, this young dupre equation, if you look at, so that is the this is called the uh, this is through this uh, your diagram. I am trying to explain you that is if I suppose this is my bubble phase. Okay. Uh, so, you have got uh, water here and this domain it is the water and you have got the solid that is getting added to the bubble surface. Now, what will happen now if we try to do the balancing of the your surface energies between water and air. So, you have three phases that you have got air bubble, you have got fluid that is the water and you have got the solid particles. So, there will be three different types of surface energies. So, between water and air that is the bubble. So, there is one surface energy, there will be solid and air that is your bubble surface and the solid particles and solid and water, solid and water interface that is your. So, that is the because solid is also um, having access to the water. So, that is the solid water interface. According to Young Dupre equation that if we represent that tau w a and tau s a and tau s w as the surface energies between the water air that is w stands for water a stands for air s stands for solid. So, the surface energy between water air solid air and solid water interface and theta is the contact angle theta is the contact angle between the water and air phase uh, air and your solid and water phase that is this angle that is at what angle it is there. So, then according to Young Dupre equation it is tau w a cos theta is equal to tau s a minus tau s w. So, what is this contact angle between this your your water and air phase. So, that is that is between this this and your tau s w that is solid and water. So, that is the called the theta that is called the contact angle. So, if I do a force balance we can write that tau w a cos theta is equal to tau s a minus tau s w. Now, what do I do with this? So, what will happen? So, now let us say that work of adhesion is represented by the w s a that is the let w s a that is between the solid and the air because we need to know the particle and bubble attachment. 
So, let W s a is the work of adhesion that is the force required to break the particle bubble interface that is how intensely they are attached to. So, that interface if you want to break then what are the conditions that W s a that your work of adhesion how do I represent it that is, is equal to tau w a that is your tau w a plus tau s w that is your solid and water minus tau s a that is minus tau s a that is solid air. So, you can write that w s a is equal to tau w a minus tau w a cos theta why no we have already written that tau w a cos theta is equal to tau s a minus tau s w by rearranging this equation and putting the values here we can get w s a is equal to tau w a minus tau w a cos theta. So, we can write w s a is equal to tau w a 1 minus cos theta. So, what will happen that if the theta is equal to 0. So, cos theta is equal to 1. So, this will be 1 minus 1. So, that is 0. So, tau a w s a will be 0. So, if theta is equal to 0 then that means the work of adhesion is that is the uh, it is the particle will be uh, will not be adhered to the surfaces of the bubble. So, but if theta is 90 degree then cos 90 is equal to 0. So, that is w s a is equal to tau w a. So, this is what I try to write here that from the above equation it can be seen that greater the contact angle greater is the w s a that is the work of adhesion between particle and bubble and thus more resilient is the system to the disruptive forces. So, what will happen if theta is more? So, w s a that is the is equal to tau w a is equal to tau w a. So, that means this is the force that will be much more dominant when the theta is uh, at a much higher level. So, that means that greater is the w s a that means the you need much more disruptive forces to dislodge them. That means, what is the intensity of the your uh, or the what is the intensity of that adhesion forces in between the particle and the bubble which decides that uh, how stable is this attachment. So, that depends on this contact angle more the contact angle the stable the more stable is that your attachment. We have seen that contact angle around 90 degree is sufficient. So, if the bubbles are larger in size relative to the particles, so what will happen? Thereby decreasing the surface area of the bubble. That means, if you are have much more bigger bubbles than the particles, now what will happen? The available surface area for the particles to get adhered to the bubble surfaces will be less and this causes also that your bigger bubbles they will have much more interstitial spaces and through which the fluid can enter that is your water can enter into the froth. So, when the bubbles are carried then you will have more vacant spaces between the bigger your bubbles. So, that fluid can get entered into that. So, that is your water can get entered into that which leads to entrainment because then what will happen? It will the particles which are carried towards the uh, along with the water that will be also entrained into the your along with the bubble and then they will report to the froth phase. So, if I want to reduce the entrainment effect I have to have larger bubble surface areas that means, we need much more finer bubbles according to the particle sizes. 
Therefore, the bubble diameter must be comparable to the particle diameter to ensure a good contact between them. So, one is the if the bubble diameter is much bigger. So, the available surface area for the particles because the particles are also having larger surface area because they are too fine. So, they will have uh, a lesser surface area of the bubbles to get adhered to that is number one and if you have only bigger bubbles then you will have void spaces in between the bubbles where the water can get entrained and along with the water your mineral part or the mineral and gang without having any selectivity they can also get entrained and we have already discussed that the entrainment we have to minimize because it affects the separation efficiency. So, this is one trick by adjusting the bubble diameter according to the particle diameter that is how you can minimize the entrainment. Also the stability of the froth must not be too high. What will happen? The we are saying the bubbles has to be stable, but too, too much of stability what will happen as it can lead to the formation of persistent foam which is difficult to convey and pump through plants. That means, if the bubbles do not if they are difficult to break uh, once they are collected into the concentrated launder then what will happen the transportation because you have to recover the concentrated particles which are reported into the uh, concentrated launder. Now, the first thing what you have to do once they are collected there the bubbles should be uh, the uh, say destroyed, but if they are too adamant to be broken then what will happen you need additional energy to break them and then you have to transport it and for that you have some material handling system you may have piping you may have your transportation through the pipes because they are in the slurry form and then they will be viscous and then the pumps also will have problem in uh, 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 say pumping the this froth phase. So, you have to convert that froth phase into a slurry phase back again into the concentrated launder as soon as they are being collected into the concentrated launder. So, the too much of froth stability is also not wanted, but you need a minimum amount minimum uh, 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 amount of stability for the froth if they are too unstable then what will happen when they are reported into the froth phase and if the bubble breaks immediately then again particle will come back to the your flotation cell without being collected through the scrapper to the concentrated launder. So, this is also what you need to control properly. Now, let us tell you that what are the most common ores now I have already uh, mentioned this, but let me elaborate this that which are being treated at present by the froth flotation techniques. There is some native metals like gold and silver, then oxide ores like iron Fe 2 O 3, aluminum ore like bauxite Al 2 O 3 2 H 2 O, tin uh, the it is the metal, but the ore is cassiterite SNO2, copper is could be cuprite Cu2O, it may be some sulphide form also, but these are the oxide ores we are talking. So, that is the cuprite is another oxide ore of copper, then zinc oxide like zincite, then titanium oxide like FeTiO3, ilmenite, it could be rutile TiO2, then there are sulphide ores like zinc, blend, your galena your copper glands your silver glands or argentile and then iron pyrite like your pyrites we call it pyrites sometimes in some places they call it iron pyrites. Carbonate ores like your siderite for iron and then calamine for zinc cerusite for lead uh, like that your sulphate ores halide ores silicate ores and so on. Specific ore applications like your sulphide ores that is your copper, copper molybdenum, 
then your lead zinc iron copper lead zinc iron ore then your oxide copper and then and lead lead zinc gold silver then nickel nickel copper fluoride that is your non sulfide ore tantalum tungsten tin lithium coal and it the list goes on now if i look at the what are the essentials essential variables in a flotation process so this is this can be shown like this your diagram that is your flotation system this has been named by someone that is is called the flotation system so in a flotation system what are the most important your components we can group them into three different components with this form of a your triangle first one is the chemistry components and all three are equally important you cannot neglect one um, any one of them so in the chemistry components there are basically we are adding different chemicals and all these chemicals they have got separate purposes like some that the, there are some names of these we call it collectors frothers activators depressions and ph modifiers like it is not essential that in every cases you need all these chemicals it depends on the those mineral surface characteristics and the your uh, your economics and then your accuracy that whether you need more uh, uh, say cleaner product or whether you need more recovery that is whether you want to have a, a more focus on a flotation process on the assay content of your concentrate or on the recovery of the material so but we have to understand what are the roles of this individually which we will discuss in due course of time that is what is the role of the collectors and what are the different types of collectors and where do you use them what are the different frothers so collectors are basically used for making the surfaces hydrophobic selectively frothers are being used to uh, have some froth stability but how much i will add this what type of frother because i mentioned that we don't want too much of stable froth and we don't want even the weak froth so what is the your optimum froth stability we want that has to be synchronized with your mechanical your design of your froth collection system then activators uh, like your many times you want to add some kind of chemicals to promote this process of your um, uh, say actually to activate your collectors that is your to promote this your uh, your say bubble particle attachment processes are uh, by applying uh, it is like just your synchronous to your catalyst we use for catalyzing the your chemical reactions in some cases so it activates it is the activators depressants many a times what happens your both the minerals that is your both your wanted and unwanted minerals they are having uh, similar uh, surface chemical properties that means it is very difficult to selectively make your your wanted material surface to be hydrophobic so but in that case what do we use the trick that is we use certain chemical which will try to uh, depress that is or some unwanted material in case of reverse flotation you can make the surface of your wanted material to be depressed that is you do not want them to get adhered to the your uh, bubble surfaces that is by through some means that you want to do it and when you add some chemicals to those uh, there and it will selectively sit on your targeted material surfaces which will depress it which will suppress it from being floated ph 
many all this your most of this uh, your chemicals they work better in a particular pH condition that is and mainly the collectors they work better at a favorable pH conditions. Some collectors they work nicely in alkaline atmosphere, some, uh, some collectors they work in much better in a slightly acidic conditions. Like that frothers activated depressions also many times they require some pH adjustment of your uh, uh, sludge. So, you have to add some pH modifiers. So, if you want to make it acidic you pour some kind of your uh, dilute acid, if you want to make alkaline you add some alkali. Then they are, there are basically equipment components. What are those equipment components? That what is the cell design? That what is the L by D ratio? What is the depth of that cell? And how big is that cell? Because what will happen if you have your your much longer cell, but the dimension diameter is too less? So what will happen when you are aerating? So there will be wall effects. That means the wall will start playing a dominant role. Uh, for the because you need to have control certain uh, degree of fluid mechanical behavior of the your movement of your fluids as well as the movement of solids in the fluid medium as well as the bubbles movement also in the uh, your uh, the system. So, the cell design how it is designed what is the material of that and then uh, what are the dimensions these are the main uh, components then agitation how you are creating that agitation. One example I have shown it with impalers, but you can do it in many ways. So, that how you are creating the agitation and how you can have a controlled agitation that is the most important factor. So, that you can create just the your uh, uh, so that kind of turbulent atmosphere which is required. Then air flow the whether the air flow is in the upward direction, how do you make the air flow consistently towards the upward direction. So, uh, how the bubbles they will flow, because if they are biased towards some direction. So, then all the froths will be only uh, formed into a particular corner of your cell. So, how do you spread them? So, you have to have your, your air flow to be monitored. Then your cell bank configuration, like whether you have got only one shell or like your jigs what we did that is you have got a big compart big uh, your vessel and you have got separate compartments like that also flotation cells can be designed that is uh, and then how the cell bag how will you be able to transfer your froth material to the next cell and from that to next cell and to the next cell how it will be automatically transferred what are the fluid mechanical behavior what are the mode of transport, what are the mechanical means of transporting it. Then your cell bank control, how do you control that is what I was telling that is how do you do it automatically that they should travel. And then your, so these are the chemistry component, this is the equipment components and then there are the operational components that is your operating variables like feed rate at what rate you are feeding because if you are feeding it too fast. So, what will happen although your capacity may be increased, but your selectivity may be compromised. What is the meaning of that? That your you may be having uh, more recovery of the minerals uh, that is your wanted minerals, but you will be you will not be able to have your desired grade of your concentrate. So, feed rate uh, you have to uh, have your optimum feed rate based on the cell design depending on the your uh, uh, your uh, efficiency of your collectors and your other chemicals. So, these are all interdependent these are basically chemistry equipment and your operating conditions they are all uh, your interdependent your uh, variables. So, you cannot isolate that we will focus only on the chemistry part though these two also you cannot neglect. So, if you want to be a good flotation engineer you have to give have due consideration in all these three components. So, feed rate and then what is the mineralogy that means uh, uh, 
what are the mineral different minerals you have because your as I said that your un, your wanted minerals could be many times 3, 4 different minerals. Similarly, your unwanted minerals could be of varieties of different minerals like you can have a mixture of carbonates and then you can have your mixture of silicates these are all basically unwanted minerals. So, like a good example is a rock phosphate ore where the ore is called your appetite. Okay. And this appetite uh, many times you may have your impurities like your iron could be impurities, silicate minerals could be impurities, then carbonates also in various form like CSCO3 that is your dolomite and your calcite. So, all these could be your impurities. In certain cases you can have only uh, your silicates are the major impurities in some cases carbonates could be only the major impurities in some cases may be your uh, uh, say iron could be the major impurities but when you have a mixture of these impurities then uh, the process becomes very difficult so i should have proper knowledge about the mineralogical behavior of my ore not only focusing at your wanted material but also the unwanted material because this is a surface chemistry based phenomena Suppose, I want to float only appetite, but your carbonates also you are seeing that that is also being floated although you could discard the iron rich particles and your uh, silicate particles. Now, how do you separate the carbonates and your appetite that becomes a difficult part. So, we need to know have the complete your knowledge about the mineralogical behavior, then particle size and size distributions, pulp density that is again it is related to your, your capacity that is what is that your uh, maximum percentage of solids you can feed in your slurry. So, that also controls the pulp density basically if you have more of pulp density. So, that means your particle concentration is more that means um, your the relative surface area of your particles if it is much higher than the bubble surface area of what you have generated then again your some particles although they are you have made them hydrophobic, but they will be starving for bubbles to uh, uh, get lifted up. So, you should have so what will have you will have a loss in recovery drastic loss in recovery. So, what is the and then if it is too much of solids your pulp may be too viscous. So, if it, there is a viscous uh, uh, your pulp then you will have problems in pumping and then even your air flow and all this will be hindered. Then what is the temperature that is also very important in froth flotation because that temperature again controls not only the viscosity of the pulp and the, your fluid phase, but also the temperature controls the effectiveness of your chemicals that is various chemicals if it is too hot or it is too cold then their effectiveness also gets uh, affected severely. So, all these three aspects all these three uh, your uh, in a flotation system we have to give due consideration and that is your chemistry component your equipment component and your operational components and on top of that there are many other variables like which um, I have not discussed because in a flotation we say there are more than 100 variables like your what is the material of construction of your flotation cell because how do you protect it from your wear because you are using uh, your many chemicals even for pH modifiers you may be using your acid or maybe your alkalis. So, how do you prevent your uh, flotation cell uh, from getting corroded? Then there are uh, basically the water quality that what is that water quality does it have already the dissolved solids. So, what will happen if you have dissolved solids. So, these collectors and frothers and activators and depressants their effectiveness may be reduced drastically. So, that is the main reason that we have seen many times that same mineral if you are using the similar cell 
and with the similar chemicals at one place using that water available there. And if you try to reproduce those experiments at a different place using a different water, you will have you may have different responses. Most of the cases you will have different responses. The main reason is your water chemistry is different. So, this is in not cell the variables, but I uh, personally believe that if we have your thorough knowledge about each of these aspects, you can optimize your flotation system uh, uh, to some extent uh, which is acceptable to your uh, uh, plant uh, your uh, plant uh, higher authority or it may be economically viable. But again and again I am repeating that these are connect these are all interrelated. So, we whenever we try to optimize any parameter we have to have due consideration about other two parameters. So, this is in short about the flotation system. So, we will continue this lecture and the, uh, the because the flotation has got different aspects that is now quite evident now, but I will only try to uh, give you some brief uh, your exposure that is why they are important and why we have to know the much more details about this and I will try to make you interested to learn more on this subject for the aspiring flotation engineers. Thank you very much.